Thanks for joining at Wandering Upward. I'm gonna do another installation of a forest garden and I'm actually extending the, the current forest garden that I have. And uh, there's a number of ways you can, you can prepare the, the ground. Um, the way that I currently did it was using a tiller to till out the grass. And that's actually my least preferred method. Uh, there's the better ways of doing it would be to put down, put down a tarp. I usually use a, a billboard tarp or a carpet. You can put down carpet, just anything to, to mulch out the grass because you don't want the grass coming into your, your uh, forest garden. Um, so as you can see, the one behind it, I did that about nine months ago and there's no weeds have come through it at all. So if you, uh, if you prepare the ground right, then you don't have to worry about the grass coming up through it and you can save yourself infinite amounts of trouble and uh, your plants are gonna grow a lot better. So uh, pretty much um, tilled the entire thing. I'm gonna rake it down flat and then I'm gonna cover it with cardboard. And then on top of that, I'm gonna put soil and some, uh, some compost that I have in the back and then mulch over the top of it. That's pretty much the entire process. And when you're picking a spot to put, uh, to put your new garden in, your forest garden, um, what I try to do is I try to, anywhere on the edge of the garden is gonna be like a front line that you have to compete against weeds. You can see over here, like this edge is right up against the grass. That grass is gonna wanna infiltrate its way into the garden. So if you can minimize the number of edges that have grass along them, that's gonna be your best bet. So I always try to expand out from current gardens or I use like over here, um, the edge of the concrete. I always try to like have as, I don't wanna, you wouldn't wanna just put one right out in the middle of a bunch of grass because then you have 360 degrees of, uh, of weeds trying to infiltrate their way in. So uh, that's really, and you can use any materials you have on hand and uh, you don't actually even have to, uh, to put down anything um, you can you can really you can do uh, like succession planting to do it. Uh, I haven't actually done that. I've seen some people experimenting with it. So hopefully in the future I'll get a, a video on on uh, doing that. So uh, we'll cut it out right now, and then when we come back, I'll I'll show you after we get the cardboard and everything down. All right. So what you'll see I did next here is map out the entire area that I'm going to be planting the garden in. And you can see here, these are the, these are the pathways uh, that run throughout the garden. And then um, each spot, my idea for this one, I really wanted to, to plant it to where it's an aesthetically appealing landscape uh, type of edible forest garden. Um, it's just something that, that I wanted to experiment with. And I think, uh, you know, if someone's gonna have a forest garden in their front yard, they might want it to be to be attractive and pretty. So what I did is in the, this, I have a, a mulberry tree already planted right here. So I'm kind of having to work around that. <clears throat> and in this area I put, um, I kind of have a little, a little legend here so I didn't have to write the names of everything. But I put a, a chaya, like a row of chaya along here, which is a tall bushy green and then Right below it, I put uh, nitrogen. I'm gonna put some nitrogen fixing trees here, 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 and here. I have a nitrogen fixing tree called Caliandra that has some nice red bottle brush looking flowers. It's a nice decorative plant. And then, uh, then the next row <clears throat> below it is gonna be clumps of lemongrass. One, two, three clumps of lemongrass, which get nice and green and bushy. They're real pretty. And then between those, I have some cranberry hibiscus, which is a, a very nice uh, purple foliage that's gonna be kind of scattered throughout there. Um, so I'm kind of tapering it down to where uh, it looks kind of like a, like a stadium or like a set of bleachers, but just different colored plants and different shapes. And then I have the same type of thing from over here, which is cranberry hibiscus uh, lined up along here with nitrogen fixtures in between them. And then in front of it, Okanam, Okanama, uh, Okanawa and Suriname spinach uh, staggered in front of here, which is like a lower, like green, green shrubbage and the Okinawa spinach has some purple in it which is nice and then the front I'm gonna do tomatoes because this area right here which is this edge right by the um, right by the concrete that area um, it's like I said it's up against concrete and what I found with the tomatoes is that they uh, I don't need to trellis them when they're next to concrete because they'll just grow over the concrete and lay uh, lay on the concrete and they kind of grow out like vines and um, the, they don't deteriorate. The fruit doesn't deteriorate from being on the, on the ground. 
because it's not soil and the bugs won't climb up on it. So anyway, this uh, that's the layout that I have and you can see it. Um, this is as far as I can zoom out. But I, what I just did is after I put down the, the cardboard, so I put cardboard down really thick after I tilled it. And so then I put, I put these paths in here exactly like I, like I drew them out on the paper. And it's gonna tie into, it's gonna tie into this path, which I haven't connected through yet. And what you can see, what I did is I mounted up, they're gonna be two foot wide paths. So I made them a little bit narrower than two feet and wound, uh, mounted them up so that I'm gonna throw, the next thing I'm gonna do is throw the soil in here and I want the soil to be able to uh, have something to rest up against. And then once I get the soil in, I can, I can rake these paths down flat. So it's nice to have the paths laid out and then you can put the soil in and you can see exactly where everything's gonna go. You can picture it a little bit better. And, uh, and it's got a, you know, just a way that you can, you can observe it a little easier. All right, so I got all the soil in and I got a lot of the plants planted. Um, I'll kind of walk you through what we got here. Uh, these, you see these little guys here, cranberry hibiscus, uh, they grow up to be a big bushy red plant. Um, and then these, these right here, the Suriname spinach, uh, that'll grow about to be two foot high and pretty bushy. Um, between those, I got three of the, three of the uh, Suriname spinach in this row, and then Okinawa spinach between them. There's more Okinawa spinach than there is Suriname spinach because they don't get quite as big. Um, so there should be a nice row of tall pink hedges in the back. They're planted pretty close together. So this should be like a long hedge of, of tall red uh, cranberry hibiscus. Um, this, this is a path that goes through here. And then in front of it, I did a mulch uh, compost mixture and inside of there I planted sweet potatoes so you plant sweet potatoes about about five inches down and then as they come up you just keep uh, piling mulch or soil on top of them so that they end up being about eight inches eight inches underground for maximum production and they were little seedlings so I put uh, palm fronds over the top of them to protect them from the sun um, and back here I have a row of chaya so this chaya goes along here and that could be i mean that chaya can grow up to be six or seven feet tall um, so it's going to be a pretty solid hedge and then on the other side of the chaya there's three clumps of lemongrass these are lemongrass clumps and they're they end up being nice tall pretty uh, clumps of gla uh, grass and then in between those i have some Cranberry hibiscus, one, two, three, and then one on each end, um, and then some kind of uh, a little bit behind them. So this whole thing should fill in really nice. And the chaya will be the tallest in the back, and then next will be the, the lemongrass, and that gets about two feet tall, and then the cranberry hibiscus, which will be three or, three or four feet tall in between those. So it should be a nice, colorful, green, uh, grassy, and red hedge. And then on the front row, I have Okinawa spinach, which is uh, this little green plant here with the, the purple. So that'll bush out and hopefully cover this, this bottom here. And then there's the mulberry tree right there in the center, which will eventually grow up. Um, what I like to do with the food forest design, a lot of people plant um, the trees to where uh, when they're full grown, the canopies are uh, pretty much touching, but I like to put extra space in there and make it less of a food forest and more of a like a food savanna uh, to where there's not so many trees and we can keep having these perennial vegetables in between them that will uh, you know continue to get sunlight instead of eventually just being blocked out. Um, I like to think of the trees as you know something that's kind of a little treat or a luxury when you're walking around but when you're talking about really producing food um, I, I lean more on the, the perennial vegetables. And right here is a little hibotsukaba. That's a row of chaya that was already there. And then in front of this chaya, uh, I'm just gonna put chives and uh, nitrogen fixers. And what I have for nitrogen fixing ground cover is cowpea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna broadcast cowpea all between uh, all of this. 
and uh, cowpea will reseed in Florida. So hopefully it should uh, it should stay there for the duration of the of the food forest. And uh, another thing that I put for nitrogen fixation, and you'll be able to see some of them are dying. This is partridge pea. It's kind of hard to see. This is one that's this is one that's dying. Let me find a. Uh, this one right here is not dying. I just transplanted all these and I found them on the property. Uh, partridge pea is a native nitrogen fixer. It grows about two feet tall. Um, they're kind of like the same color as the ground. Maybe you can see this one right here. See, this one died. About half of them died for some reason, but this is about as tall as it gets. And uh, they produce a nice pretty yellow flower. So I'm, gonna, I'm putting these all in between everything and then broadcasting cowpea. I just got the cowpea and the, uh, and the inoculant that I'm gonna put, um, put on those and then, and then put it all here. I don't have a lot of nitrogen fixtures, but when I started this, both of these gardens, I put a lot of soil, uh, nice soil and compost in them. So they have a lot of nitrogen and nutrients in them already. Um, so it's not really, I don't feel rushed to get it in there, but I do need to um, so that it continues to, to uh, you know, have nutrients in the soil. All right, so at this point, this addition to the food forest garden is complete um, with the exception of some grass clippings that I'm gonna put down as mulching um, over the top of, of all of this. And I have the, the uh, grass clippings drying out over here next to where my parents are putting in a passion fruit trellis right now. And so what I ended up, uh, you'll see having some, uh, the cow pee, I got the cow pee in here and I broadcast it throughout. That'll be the, the nitrogen fixers, um, along with the partridge pea that I'm gonna uh, put in here whenever I have time. I ended up putting another whole section of uh, sweet potatoes right in front, just because I had some extra sweet potato slips and I wanted to get them in the ground so, so that I'll be able to eat them or sell them later. And In about, uh, I'll do a follow-up in a few months, maybe give it about six months, and we'll be able to see how it how it's filled in, and uh, hopefully it'll it'll be nice and aesthetically pleasing, and uh, you know, and, and hopefully by then we'll also have expanded it further this way. My my goal is to just keep expanding it, and uh, hopefully eventually have a have a food producing permaculture uh, food forest system that that I'm able to to sell sell plants out of at the farmers market and things like that um, which is something that I haven't really seen in any of the places that I've gone uh, a lot of the places were were pretty disorganized and they weren't having a lot of major food production um, though I'm sure there's places that that are I just haven't personally uh, been able to find any yet so you guys be joining me on that adventure and uh, keep everyone posted and, and good luck. Uh, send me a, an email or a comment on here if you need any help or, or recommendations about what to do or what to do if you can't find soil. Um, that's one thing is as I have had the luxury of ha getting all this free soil from, from the Orlando dump, they provide you with a truckload of free soil per day. Um, and not, not all places have that. So that's kind of a luxury that I have but it is possible to put in food, food for us without that. Um, and I'll, I'll, eventually, I'll eventually put some in without doing that and I'll, I'll have some videos of it so that you'll be able to see that too. So um, good luck, have fun with it.